Good evening. Our country welcomes you, and may I search your luggage? I find the life of a border guard quite diverting. It's very much like working at the checkout stand of a giant supermarket. I also have a very lucrative sideline. I retouch passport photographs for men. Your reputation as super spy is well earned. Even though defeated, you're taking me to hell with you. Afraid not. Cheerio. Please, That's a good boy. Here we go. You don't want to bite me. Good killer dog. I believe I have a reservation. My name is James. Yes, of course. Room 28. Your luggage arrived this morning. I hope you'll enjoy your stay with us. We have some beautiful nature trails. And excellent bar facilities, should you care to get yourself completely whaled. Room 28. Thank you. Rachel, I'm very nervous. What if I get another attack? You won't. I couldn't stand it if it happened again. Mickey, it never happened. I guess you're right. Oh, Rachel, I, I, I wish I could tell you how I feel. You've become very important to me. You've saved me. There was nothing to save you from. Just remember, there isn't any problem. Now, have another drink, relax, feel good. I'll see you in a few minutes. That's Rachel. She's my therapist. I'm in love with her. She wants me to have another drink. Wish she was my therapist. Oh, she's really helped me over my problems. I used to black out, you know. Mo, Oh, yeah, and when I'd wake up, there'd be blood everywhere and, and, and dead people. Say, you interested in stuffed birds? I'm not just talking once or twice, either. Stuffed them myself? I mean, you can't blame me for thinking I was a murderer. Just last week, I ran down a rooster, but Mrs. Pickett said it wasn't right to stuff them. I, I mean, I'd pass out and bang, stiff city. Guess she's right. No point in wasting good food. Turns out, though, it was always just a coincidence. Does, it, does this happen often? No, not really. <sighs> just my drink. I wish Rachel would get back. Yes. Yes, on the train. You know me, I meet them everywhere. <laughs> anyway, he's a producer. He just did mating seasons. Well, I guess it's one of those films, but I mean, who cares? It's a break, a movie's a movie. I just have to prove to him that I've got what it takes. You see Boone, just for the weekend? Double occupancy, Mr. Boone. Excuse me? Double occupancy. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, uh, I just met that young lady on the train. Turned out to be a, a real coincidence she was coming here, too. Single it is. Yes. I produce films, nature films, uh, birds, animals, bugs, that sort of thing. I don't have uh, much time to spend with women. Uh-huh. Uh, would you like to register, miss? Yes, something close to Mr. Boone, that's okay. Sure, uh, whatever, <clears throat> your room. I'll give you a room on his left. Ooh. 
Yeah. I'll never have a relationship with a woman. Greenwich Mean Time. The following are mission instructions for Mr. James. One or more of your fellow guests is a Soviet agent. Like you, they have been sent to retrieve the golden egrette of Bishwara, which is hidden somewhere in your hotel. Unless you recover the statue, the vital state of Bishwara may fall to Soviet domination. Now, oh, thought you might be interested in some match results. Fourth division, Doncaster one, Gillingham nil, Bristol City. Rachel, baby, sometimes a man sees what he wants and he just has to take it. No, that's too much. Where is that damn contact? As I discover my inner self, I feel that we could share a mutually giving, loving, caring. Ugh. So I'll go without my contact lens. This will probably be easier if I can't see him. Now, is his room on my left? Or was it his left? Rachel, say you will be mine, and, and, and I'll be yours, and, and then we'll be each other's. Yeah. Say you'll marry me, and, and we'll have a big wedding, and a, a neat honeymoon, and we can move in together, and, and have a life, and maybe have children or something. Uh, I mean, I think we could be very good for each other. Very good. I could even help you in your career. I know you can. Mickey? Oh, Mr. Boone. Mickey! It's not what you think. Let me explain. Oh, this is wonderful. You've, you've got your sex drive back. Don't let me interrupt. I'll, uh, I'll see you at dinner. Oh, my God, Rachel. Wait. <laughs> Oh, my God. I... You wouldn't happen to be in the film business by any chance, would you? Hello? Oh, damn. Are you all right? Oh, go away, please. Oh, cheap hotel fixtures. Here, now. This is no solution to life's problems. Oh, how would you know? In 12 years of psychoanalysis, I have never encountered a problem that big. You've been in analysis for 12 years and you're gonna try to help me? Oh, no, no, no. I give the analysis. I'm a psychiatrist. Oh. Now, what's the problem? <clears throat> well, uh, it's women. They terrify me. Whenever I try to talk to them, my, my throat tightens up. I sound like a fool. I can't communicate at all. You're doing just fine now. Yeah, but you're a doctor. Well, I'm still a woman. Uh, it's just different somehow. Well, maybe that's good. Yeah. Hey, maybe it is. Can we talk just, oh, oh. I just feel a little woozy. <laughs> I've got the woozles. And what did we discuss <laughs> about that? I should go lie down. Exactly right. You're doing well. You'll feel much better. Martini, martini. Mm -mm. Not stirred. Oh. You a bird lover, sir? Well, in a manner of speaking. This, uh, this isn't much of a collection, actually. Uh, that horny grouse on the wall is a fake, for instance. They've been extinct for over, uh, 70 years. Indeed. If you'll excuse me. I went to your room before. I mean, I, I went to the wrong room. Were you upset? Well, it may have, uh, may have just looked that way. <laughs> Mr. Boone, it's time I put my cards on the table. 
I know what you do for a living, and, well, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Nice to hear you say that. The strangest things get left behind. Umbrellas, personal garments, devices. Well, you know. Oh, quite. <laughs> I'll go take a look in the safe. Oh, might we meet in your office, say, in five minutes? Of course. Guess I haven't lost it. The truth is, I'd love to work with you. Well, you'd have to be able to handle uh, more than one position. You need to be uh, very flexible. Oh, I am. I am. Oh, <clears throat> what kind of uh, qualifications do you have? Well, aren't they obvious to you? Uh, I need to see them. Now? No time like the present. Oh, my God. Predatory female mating behavior. Stop it. What are you doing to him? I'm just trying to make a living. You're tormenting this man. Some people can't relate to members of the opposite sex. It makes them tense and nervous. Your heart races and your palms sweat, and you get this awful, sick feeling right here. So I'm told. Come along, Mr. Boone. We'll talk. Mm, sorry. semicircular blade. That's not a scythe. The scythe is a reaping implement with a very long blade. That's right. Sort of like a, a crooked pole with two handles sticking out at right angles. Yes, and the blade's only slightly curved. It's not semicircular. What you're describing is a sickle. The point is, she's been murdered. Well, in that case, no one is to leave this hotel. And that includes you, bartender. <gasps> oh, Mrs. Pickett just don't like me hanging around at dinner time. Says I put people off their food. Well, Mrs. Pickett is stone cold dead. Well, I grant you, she might not be the most responsive person in the world, but... She's been murdered. Crikey! Shouldn't we call the police? I already have. Then they're on their way? I'm afraid not. You see, the storm has washed out the bridge. And we're completely isolated here in the hotel. Huh. Isn't that always the way, huh? And our only option is to stay here and uncover the killer ourselves. Look, there's no point in dragging this out. I know who the killer is. Can you tell us? Yes. We're waiting. Oh, you mean now? Oh, sorry. The killer is that cheap little slut over there. Who you calling cheap, buddy? Not you. I was pointing at Honey. No, she's innocent. She has to be. She's too sweet and loving and trusting to do anything this awful. I know who the killer is. It's me. Good hint. Always suspect the guy whose hands are soaked in blood. I had a blackout tonight. And when I woke up, I followed the trail of blood right to the body. I've had this problem for years. I hoped that Rachel had cured me, but I guess it came back. Oh, this is just great. Five years of sweat and toil, five long years of analysis, and you throw it all right down the drain. And for what? One mad rampage with a scythe. A sickle. Whatever. This is going to ruin my reputation. Well, how do you think I feel? Oh, spare me your self-pity. I'm the one who had to wade hip deep through the swamp of your psychosis listening to all your sick fantasies about your father and your gym I'd rather teacher. we didn't go into detail. I'm the one who had to hear day in, day out about your bouts with impotence. I think we've got the gist of this. Your attraction to mailmen. Your fear of the Lone Ranger. It was his mask. Your insane compulsion to own a kangaroo. <laughs> Doctor, please. 
Mr. Dexter is not our murderer. There's more to this than meets the eye. What are you talking about? Well, recently, a guest at this hotel was murdered. And in his possession, he had a priceless statue. And even as we speak, a courier is expected to arrive here, someone who is willing to pay handsomely to acquire that statue. It's likely that the object is still here. And at least one of us is willing to kill to obtain it. Mr. Boone, isn't it true that you were born to an unwed mother and that you were put up for adoption in 1951? No. And isn't it also true that over the years those feelings festered and you developed this insane need to avenge the act of rejection? No. And wasn't it that compulsion that brought you here tonight because your mother was no other than Mrs. Pickett? No. No, it isn't true. Oh, well, I gave it a shot. You see, this drawing room sleuthing is really not my forte. I'm much better at big action-type situations. This is obviously getting us nowhere. We all have our specialities. I swear that if any one of you were chasing me in a rocket sled, you'd be minced tots. Look, we're isolated here, completely cut off. If no one's going to confess, I for one suggest that we all get a good night's sleep. Excuse me. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, I'm quite tired. I must warn you to keep your doors locked. Was Mother when you were next door? You have to help me, please. From the first moment I saw you, I knew. You're the only woman who understands me. Oh, I feel the wild, unbridled passion of a great gray crane scenting the musk of his downy hen. Oh, AC. No man has ever spoken to me like that. Missed last call, eh? Oh, you scared me. I was just gonna go get a nightcap. What are you doing here? Just looking for a little fun. My God, the scythe! It's a sickle. Yeah, right. You know more than you're letting on, lady. <laughs> Can three play this game, Bonnie? Three? How about four? I've been looking forward to this. Oh. Don't throw that! You should let you out more often. Uh. Oh. What is this? This waste of good furniture. Uh. This is a little more my style. <laughs> Shocking. Come along, Rachel. We have to catch a plane to Rio for the mating season of the three-toed sloth. Oh, I see. Tell me all about it in detail. Come spring. Here I thought I was a murderer, and it turns out to have been Barney all along. I still can't figure out why he killed Mrs. Pickett. Well, both Barney and Mrs. Pickett were imposters. Rogue agents on the trail of the statue. They killed the real owner, gardener, and bartender, and took over. The statue, I assume, is long gone, and the courier has likely traced it elsewhere. All I know is I've got my man. And I can give myself to you completely, now that I know I'm not a killer. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure, anyway. Well, goodbye, Mr. I never did get your name. Alone at last. And I thought I was the only one that spotted it. Not at all. The 
It's obviously impossible to stuff a bird that's been extinct for 70 years, unless it was deliberately faked as a signal, which Mr. Boone inadvertently revealed to us. I assume you're the courier. Naturally. And the blackouts and murders? The blackouts were a fraud. The murders were very real. It all made a fine cover for my work over the years. An assassin for hire, I presume? Correct. As Honey discovered just now. Oh, don't worry. She didn't suffer. Well, no more time for chit-chat. Goodbye, Mr. James. <laughs> They're always overconfident, aren't they? Yeah, fortunately for us. <laughs> Blanks and his gun, I take it? Of course. He was pitifully easy to distract. <laughs> and you love your work. Not as much as I love you. You all right? Mm, never better. I must say I was relieved to see you here. The last report said you were the prisoner of Colonel Voloshnikov <laughs> in an aircraft or something. Well, the Colonel turned out to be a crashing boar, so I thought I'd come and try and retrieve these. Oh, James, they're beautiful. HQ doesn't know a thing about them. We could retire from the game and live excessively ever after. Is that all you care about? Wealth, material gain, comfort? Not at all. I mean, there are far more important things. After all, diamond hunt forever. My guys are... It takes more than Lil Blink Crash to discourage me. But this is end of line for you, Mr. James. By the way, you may proceed on through. I can now reveal that this is not actually the border of anything. Just a device to keep the audience until the play is over. Good night. Mm -hmm.